happy new year and actually happy new decade uh you can wish me back actually <laughs> it was a birthday on 1st january so you guys can wish her happy birthday belated as well thank you it feels wonderful to be back here after 10 years i actually came here 10 years ago for moodai to promote my film no one kill jessica with rani mukherjee and i haven't come since but i've come before that for moodai as a student from st xavier's and i have some lovely memories so i'm really excited to be here and to start my year at iit bye i already feel intelligent <laughs> <laughs> you are very intelligent. <laughs> Tech <laughs> Fest 2020. So hats off to you guys. So please have a seat. Thank you. So um, with you, you are at uh, IIT Bombay right now. Uh, how do you look back at uh, your college days? You know, actually. Uh, since i drove into campus i've been thinking you know i remember <laughs> i have some i don't know i can share these memories <laughs> there was this guy i liked who also liked me thankfully and we were both at moodai <laughs> and we bumped into each other here and i cannot even tell you the excitement and we went and had i was just asking uh, professor kundu and professor mukherjee about that nescafe stall i remember going and having those maggi bondas you know it was you all don't know that na this is a long long time ago but i remember it was so exciting to be here and i heard an el subramaniam concert el subramaniam kavita krishnamurthy it just felt so wonderful but also college life was fantastic i was at xavier's for 5 years that's where my acting career also began but just i keep telling people you know actor banna hai jo bhi karna hai par college life miss mat karna because it's so precious you can you you know you can work for the rest of your life but you can't go back to college yeah those that fun you know bunking lectures sitting out with friends going for movies or just going back home early and going to sleep and then even attending lectures of your favorite professors we don't work as hard we didn't work as hard as you all do because for us it was fairly simple aap log raat raat bhar jaagte hain but for us it was just i have great memories of college i'm sure i'm sure all right so um, youngsters they tend to be too hard on themselves uh, so if you can please share a few of your experiences because um, uh maybe you guys may not be aware of the fact but uh, vidya struggled a lot a lot of her films initial films they never released or they were shelved maybe uh so or how I did i was thrown out <laughs> so how did you de deal with failure and what is the importance of staying positive because i've always seen you very very positive yeah you know uh, thankfully faridun i think that i get from my family because um i think my parents never put the pressure of performance on my sister or me yeah. we were told you do your best and then just leave the rest to god you know we are i come from a family that prays a lot so it was always like and surrender to god or jo hona hai ho jayega you cannot control the results and importantly that you know your marks or your performance is not a reflection of the person you are it's like saying you know that there are times you'll do well there are times you won't do well and when you don't do well sometimes you know why you've not done well because you've not worked hard enough maybe because there was some personal situation maybe there was an illness maybe there was a tragedy i don't know it a heartbreak it could be anything but get that perspective and don't and sometimes you work hard and you still don't do well it's a matter of it's not just a matter of chance but i think you have to just keep at it there is no substitute for hard work but more importantly uh, you know you are not your marks 
you are not that report card. I think that we all need to remember. Like even when I have a release, I keep reminding myself that I'm not that film that's released. Whatever the fate of that film, I cannot take it personally. I've done the best I could. But beyond that, there are so many variables, <laughs> you know, that have to fall into place for a film to do well. So I think very early on in life, I realized that all I can do is do my best. Yeah. So um, one observation that I've had, I've known you for many years now, is uh, that element of perfection that you try to bring to almost everything, be it the interviews, be it the uh, promotions, how crucial is that? And you make it look very effortless. You are totally bindas and cheerful <laughs> and chirpy, but you're making sure that everything is perfect. What were you doing? How important is that streak of perfection for you? Oh my God, actually, I think perfection is an illusion. So I don't chase perfection. There was, for the longest time I did, you know, um, for the longest time I wanted to be perfect. And the more I wanted to be perfect, the more <laughs> I'd see my flaws and my faults and my limitations. I think with, with some amount of maturity and experience, you realize that the, what is perfect for you may not be perfect for someone else. You know, so that, or what is perfect for you today may not be perfect for you tomorrow. And you realize that there is no point chasing it. It is an unattainable um, goal. So. I think I stopped chasing perfection, but what I try to do, Faridun, is I enjoy whatever I do. Um, there are good days and bad days, and sometimes you're in a bad mood, and sometimes you don't feel like, you know, working, or sometimes you've just, I don't know, you've had a fight at home or something <laughs> like that, and you just don't want to, so, but to realize that, okay, I'm human, so today, I'll, I'll do the best I can today. You know, it may not, there is no, uh, yardstick or there is no measurement of best. I can do the best that I can today. Tomorrow is a different day. So I don't compare. I think that's also very important. Again, when you were talking about pressure of performance, the one thing I will say is that my parents never compared us to our friends. I had friends whose parents would say, Are dekho, usko kitna mila hai. you know, you're not working as hard. I have friends who've been through a lot of insecurity because their parents have put that, you know, they've constantly compared them to the next best. But there is no end to that. I think to compare yourself to anyone else is pointless. And today, all the more with social media, you know, my God, you see pictures, perfect, picture perfect lives, picture perfect bodies, and you think, I'm, even I go through that sometimes. And, uh, it's difficult not to get consumed by it. So lately I've started, I of course post on Instagram and all that, but I don't check anyone else's, um, like I don't, it's not my pastime anymore. It used to be at one point, but I've realized ki that, that, you know, can ruin your peace of mind more than any, anything else. How many of you keep checking social media in your free time? Come on, be honest. No, more, more, more people. Come on, I know 90% of the people in this room do that, no? And it's absolutely fine. But to realize that you can put your time to better use and to feel better about yourself. You know, in the past year, Faridun, you asked me one question, I've given you 10 answers. Mujhe baat karna baut acha lagta hai, if you haven't figured already. But, um, you know, in the past year, I've realized that I can do a lot more reading. I can watch something. If nothing else, I can sit and watch the, I live on the beach, so I sit and watch the waves. And you know, sometimes you get answers to questions in your head when you're just silent. Not sometimes, I think most of the time. So I don't meditate yet. But when I do things like this, no, solutions appear. So I think it's much better to do these things than to compare yourself. That's wonderful. Uh, she recently did a Instagram live and the beach was there as well. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we are live on Instagram. <laughs> I saw, I saw your, your Instagram. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so I think that was a much deserved um, ovation. Now, 
um, you are saying that you don't check other people's Instagram, but everyone within the industry, they are very keen to find out what you are doing. <laughs> because uh, really? you are a role model to many of the actresses. Wow, that's good okay, to know. Okay, now, you've, you've just had a 200 crore film in Mission Mangal, yeah. a film that was primarily helmed by women. How do you think a film like this can help more such films which are backed by women in future? I think already in the past 10 years, I've seen, when I was doing No One Kill Jessica, they thought, okay, a small si film mein aake chali jayegi, mm. and it did very well. You know, that was a phase when the game was changing. Right. I had just done Ishkia, I had just done Jessica, of course, I followed it up with Dirty Picture and Kahani. But tabhi, it was still, you know, Ekad film mein aise release hoti thi. Today, more female centric films are being made, they're doing better business. And Mission Mangal, of course, we can't take the credit solely. There was an Akshay Kumar who's a huge star, and it helped us immensely. You know, it was headlined by him. But um, today we might still need that. I'm saying in a few years, even that will change. Tomorrow we'll do a 200 crores or a 500 crores without an Akshay Kumar, hopefully. Wow. <laughs> I think that deserves an applause as well. You know, I, I don't expect change to happen overnight, Faridun. So when people keep saying that, you know, um, it's still called female-centric cinema, isn't that wrong? Isn't that itself um, some sort of, um, you know, sexism? I feel it's not. We've, it's only now that these kind, kinds of films are being made and they have a chance at the box office. You people are buying tickets and going and watching them. You know, we're going able to make more films. So as of now, it's okay if it's called female-centric films. Yeah. Someday, you'll just go in to see a film. The hero will either be male or female. It won't matter to you. You'll just go in to see a good story. Wow. wow. So, you know, but um, you've been part of several films and they have, they have done very well and you were the mainstay of those films, be it, uh, as I just mentioned, No One Killed Jessica, where you and Rani were there. Uh, the Dirty Picture, it was a huge hit. Then Kahani, I think, uh, rewrote the entire <laughs> box, Kahan, the Kahani box Kahani office of paradigm. Yeah. So uh, there has been a very rare occasion when an, when an actress has been compared with the Khans, and that has happened with Vidya Balan. And uh, it has been said that uh, if any actress can maybe command an opening on her own name, that is Vidya Balan. So uh, you've already done that in the past itself. So it's right. not that it's anything new. Uh, but uh, going but I forward. I bigger openings. <laughs> no, I, I'm sure it will happen. I'm greedy. I'm sure it will happen. There have been certain films which have been, I think, hampered by certain situations, like the way uh, Kahani 2 yeah. was. And uh, So how do you look at the way forward? I think it's a very interesting time for Hindi cinema, right. and I really look forward to this decade. As an actor, as a female actor, at 41, I can tell you I'm amazed at the variety of roles and the kinds of films that I'm getting offered. And in the past 10 years, year on year, that scope has just in increased and expanded. Right. So I think it's, I, l I look forward to it as a time that, um, is very exciting and exhilarating, you know, because, for example, there are some stories, I can't talk about it yet because the announcement has not been made, but a film that I'm doing next is a genre that we've not seen in Hindi cinema before. Shakuntala Devi. No, Shakuntala Devi is releasing on the 8th of May. It's ready, as in the shoot is done, but the film after that, right. you know, um, They'll make the announcement soon, and then you all will know what I'm talking about. But it's a genre that, you know, <coughs> uh, one couldn't have imagined in Hindi cinema before. And for me, as a female actor, I think it's so interesting because not only is that um, an unexplored genre, it's I'm at the center of everything. So you know, the game is changing big time. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So, um, Vidya, as I mentioned, a lot of women, they look up to you. Um, what is your definition of women empowerment? 
you know, when I think there is no one definition of women empowerment for me. Because I think um, for different people, you have to see it in the context of the reality of that person. For someone, and this is my favorite example, um, for someone who's been in a ghungat all her life, the first time she raises that ghungat and walks out of the house with her head held high, that is empowerment. For, for, some li for someone like me, you know, or like a lot of women around me who are, um, you know, trying to make a mark in what was seen as a male-dominated industry. And then, like you're saying, when our films go on to do well, uh, when we command the price that we, you know, a good price, that is women's empowerment. Um, a girl who's wanting to run away and get married to the boy of her choice, despite caste, religious differences, when she's able to do that, that's women's empowerment. So I think it's very different in different contexts. It's, it's the ability to make the choices you want to and to stand your ground. Okay, many a times we get the impression of men and women competing with, with each other. And, uh, but I personally feel it should be about equality. It should be about uh, completing each other. That, that should be the aim. What is, what is your opinion? Should I it be about competing? Men and women should be competing with each other and they should be just no, outsmarting each other? I think firstly, you know, the only person who can complete you is you. I believe that no one else can complete you. All those are romantic notions ki, you know, do just make jaan. Wo ek jaan sirf aadmi ki reh jati hai, aurat ki kho jati hai. <laughs> so, I feel it's really about being together, about respecting each other. And I, I don't think competition is unhealthy. You know, I think what's nice is when we are able to compete with men, for example, uh, for a certain, um, for certain opportunities, or when we are considered, you know, as um, we are considered equal enough, or you know, when we we are offered rather the same opportunities, the same pay, the same position, that I think is wonderful. But I think um, when, therefore, we have to comp compete for the same things, I think it's a great thing. Wonderful. Okay, in, um, uh, I interviewed you and Farhan Akhtar for Shadi Ke Side Effects. That was yes. around six years back. Uh, you made a very pertinent statement. I've mentioned that in several of my interviews. You said that we have had to negotiate our space through ages. We have been taught that we don't have a right to expect anything. We have to get what we want in a roundabout manner. Yeah. Uh, do you think, this was about six years back, do you think things are changing now? Oh, I definitely think things are changing now. Um, but I do think historically, women have been taught that you can't ask anything from yourself. You know, or you cannot have your own dreams and expectations from life, from your relationships. So if you have to get it, you have to manipulate your... So if we use all sorts of tactics. Over time, we've had to do that. But today, you know, like I said, when you're given those equal opportunities, when merit can get you ahead in life, there is less need to negotiate in those ways. But I'm still talking about a small percentage of women who are, you know, whose reality is probably similar to mine. But there are lots of women who are still in that, th who are still having to negotiate their spaces in that way, their rights in that way. But I, I think it's changing. I think that the exposure also uh, to all sorts of media, the access to a mobile phones open, opens up um, the world for you. 
you know and then you begin to see your own world through different eyes right so um in mission mangal your character is a scientist who is uh, helming a very very important mission for the country at the same time she has to manage her house and her husband has complaints and her children have issues um since time immemorial uh, the women they have to multitask yeah. they've been i think conditioned to be, to multitask um how important is it for men to participate in ambitions of women and to just make sure that they get a certain leeway at times so that they can pursue their dreams as well you know i think it's not just enough to participate and support the woman in her dreams um and to say i allow you go conquer the world but to support her in other ways at home you have to contribute equally if she's stepping out and doing a job and doing as much outside you have to begin to do something within the house also i think i know so many working women who are under this pressure to multitask they are under the pressure to be super women because you want to be the perfect professional you know because that is your passion that's your identity you also want to be the perfect daughter daughter-in-law mother wife friend i don't know you know i think it's so unfair on women and women make it tough because we don't know any better na we've been told ki acha ab tak aap ghar grihasthi sambhalte the ab aap bahar ja ke kaam kar sakte ho par we are not told that we will support you within the house so you feel that bahar ja ke kaam karna hai ghar pe bhi kaam karna hai so woman is constantly working i think it's very important that men step up and i keep telling people you know i don't multitask i'm in a very privileged position but when i'm at work i'm fully immersed in what i'm doing i don't know of course i have a great team handling my house and i'm very grateful for that but there are times when siddharth steps up and you know does whatever is required um and then i have no you know i i need things done in a particular way then it frustrates me when he is not doing it in exactly the particular way but i have to let go of that need to control because he, he says you know there are little things where i micromanage he doesn't micromanage and then it frustrates me <laughs> but the very fact that he's contributing i appreciate i'll push him little by little to do more <laughs> but at least he, you know at least i know that even if i'm not home he is and even when i'm at home there are things that we share as in you know there are things that he takes care of there are things that i take care of so it's easier said than done but if every man could go back home and just hand his wife especially the wife a glass of water you'll see a world change my god that's wonderful <laughs> and i can vouch for the fact that siddharth sir uh, there have been occasions when he has really liked your interviews with us and he, certain stories that maybe i've written so he has really been <laughs> very, very happy with that so i've personally experienced that right okay and uh, who have been your icons for women empowerment like who are the women that you've looked up to uh, in cinema cinema across across the spectrum i think uh, personally i'd say my sister she's 4 years older than me her name is priya she's in advertising um i've always looked up to her as my hero i've always felt that when she walks into a space she commands attention she can talk about anything she can talk 90 to the dozen uh she's doing extremely well in her career and she's also spreading herself thin because she's a working mother she has twins so i keep telling her from time to time you know just take it easy you don't have to be um a super woman a super mom but i think she i she's she just gives herself entirely to whatever she's doing and that i've always admired uh, but besides that for example in cinema there's shabana azmi who uh i always looked up to because she spoke she was one of the first actresses with a voice 
she was not scared to express uh, her opinions. She, um, the kind of roles she picked were those of women who weren't taking things lying down, you know. She uh, played very strong characters. She was one um, very strong influence. And then in another way, Sri Devi, because she actually, she was a, uh, in a lot of ways, she, uh, you know, she was probably one of the biggest commercial successes for a female actor. They say she used to command the same price that her male counterparts got. And, uh, you know, picture unke naam se chalti thi. And she was doing a wide variety of roles. And, so, and I love her as an actor. So I love both Shabana Azmi and Sri Devi. So, uh, and, and she's a di completely different person from Shabana Azmi, but so quiet, so withdrawn, and yet she was commanding. She had commanding screen presence, and quietly she did what she had to. And so I think these are the women. Um, I also must add that every woman who's trying to live her life on her own terms, to, you know, pursue her dreams, I get inspired by each one of them. And I'm not just paying lip service. I keep going back to the time when I was at Xavier's. I, I used to be living in Chembu. I would take the local train. And I would meet so many women, you know, um, in the ladies' compartment. And they would all have, you know, they were doing so many things at the same time. But they were positive and they were happy and they were laughing and gossiping. I admired each, I, I got inspired by each one of them. You know, they weren't bogged down by the fact that they were expected to do so much. Um, they would complain about their mothers-in-law. <laughs> they would complain about their kids, about their husbands, about, and all of that with a smile and a laugh. But importantly, they were going out there working, earning money, feeling like they're contributing more beyond the house. There was, so I think I get inspired by, in the industry, for example, we have so many <coughs> female technicians today. We could still do with a lot more, but whether it's in uh, the camera department, whether it's editors, we have lots of female editors. There are some directors, there are makeup artists, hairstylists, costume designers. Writers. We, writers and even in marketing yeah. you know so I think when I see all of them trying to um, negotiate their space and especially because it is still very male dominated I think I, I get inspired by all of them so uh, you spoke about Sri Devi ji and she used to command a sort of, sort of price that she did uh, we have this entire debate around pay parity within the industry what are your views on that you know I don't know how to react to that, Faridun, because I, I, in my experience, you know, if uh, the male actors get a certain percentage of the budget as their, um, as their fee, yeah. I get the same percentage. But their films, the budget of their films is much bigger. <laughs> the budget of my films is probably one fourth their budget. But I cannot, therefore, it's not, I can't compare it in real terms. I have to look at it in terms of the ratio. In terms of the ratio, it's still very fair. But I think where there is a huge parity is when there's a, there's a huge male star and a female star in a film, and she gets paid much less. Right. Uh, you also spoke about Shabana Azmi. She was the, one of the first actresses who spoke her mind. Now, we hear these voices many a times that um, actors should speak up on certain issues. If they speak up, there's a problem. If they don't speak, there's a problem. How do you, how do you look at there this situation? There is a problem, period. <laughs> I don't know why actors are expected to give opinions on everything. Hmm. I 
for example, can talk 19 to the dozen about things that I'm passionate about. But when I don't know about it, I'm not going to come to IIT Pawai and talk about engineering and they ask me any concepts. <laughs> engineering concepts, I'll keep shut. Mm. You know, similarly, I think uh, these days people are just flying off the handle. Achha, ab kuch hua hai, mujhe opinion hai. And um, uh, I may not even have an opinion, but Faridun ne ye bola hai, chalo alok so take on. I'll follow Faridun. And in that atmosphere, I think uh, it's very unfair if actors, because we are under so much scrutiny all the time, if we are ill-informed, if we decide not to talk about something, I think it's absolutely fair. Even if you're not ill-informed, and I choose not to speak about something, because today if I say something, it can be held against me, and there could be repercussions for a whole lot of other people. I work on films where there are 200 people working on one film. If something impacts that film, you know, um, I feel guilty about the work of so many people sure. suffering. I think it has to be looked in the larger context. And I, today, again, I think that's one of the pitfalls of social media. You know, people have actually, no one has an opinion, but everyone has an opinion. I don't know how that works, <laughs> because actually I don't know. Most people know nothing about nothing, and I'm sorry to be saying this, but um, everyone feels the need to scream louder than the other. And I don't feel that compulsion, and I don't care whoever calls me a coward or it's my life, it's my voice, I'll use it where I want to, when I want to, and I won't when I don't. <laughs> All right, so um, your next release is uh, Shakuntala Devi. Yes. Tell us, why did you choose that film in the first place? You know, Shakuntala Devi is the most fascinating woman I've come to know lately. Okay, everyone knew she was a human computer and, you know, I, I remember seeing those ads in the papers where she would have astrology sessions. Um, there's one particular picture where, where this is inspired that, by that picture, you know, it used to be in all her astrological ads. Uh, that's all I knew about her. But when I started reading about her, I was, she was a woman way ahead of her time. One, she had a wicked sense of humor. You know, the, one, the kind of humor you don't expect from women and then from a mathematician for sure. So I keep saying if she was a human computer, then she was the only computer with a sense of humor. <laughs> and she was, uh, she led her life on her own terms at a time when it was impossible for women to even not, there were very few women stepping out and going to work. You know, she went and conquered the world. She traveled the world over. She called the shots in her relationships, you know, equally as much as her partner did. And uh, I think she was so unafraid. She was, a, she was the first book on homosexuality was written by her. The world of homosexuals. The world of homosexuals in 1977. Yes. You know, incredible. At a time when I don't know if people even knew the meaning of homosexual because, you know, it's something that existed always, but we've always wanted to turn a blind eye to it. it I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about 1977. Yeah. But at that time, to have written about their rights, about asking for legalization, I think it's way ahead of her times. Way, I don't even know, if, you know, what word to use for her. I've enjoyed playing her. Apparently her husband, Paritosh Banerjee, was a homosexual. That's what she has said in a documentary for Straits Only. Uh, I shall wait for you to watch the film. We've dealt with that aspect in the film, but beyond that, I don't want to divulge too much. All right. Okay. Um, she was a fascinating character, as you mentioned about the, the sense of humor part. At the same time, the confidence part. So I, I was watching one of her uh, videos where she just calculated the 13 digits, uh, the multiplication, the way she did. And the way she was asking the panel that should I go from right to left or left to right? Yeah, you The know, confidence was incredible. Yeah, I've seen her videos and she played her audience. You would think that, achha, itne bade calculations kar rahi hai. Toh, how is she doing it? Right. You feel it's humanly impossible. I kept trying to figure out ki kya kaise calculate kiya hoga. Itne bhi steps aap pass kar lo na. <laughs> you can't give answers in that short a span of time. She was obviously, she's 
uh, she had an unbelievable gift, quality, whatever you call it. And then to do it with a sense of humor, to play to the gallery, to engage the audience, to make maths fun. You know, I've seen so many of our shows and they're not boring. Otherwise, normally, zyadatar long ko lagta hai ki maths to boring hai. You know, what is it? It's about numbers. There's no, everyone likes stories. And, but uh, she just made it so much fun. She made it accessible also. She taught you tricks. She used Vedic maths. It's something that I think we should be using far more in our country because Vedic maths was born here. <laughs> All right, and uh, um, she's someone who's uh, um, who started at a very, very early, early stage, and um, her she father. She started her first shows. At show she did her first show at the age of, age of three. Yeah, and her father, who was in a in a circus, he was a trapeze artist, and um, he identified her talent, and he promoted her. He encouraged her. They went to London after that. Um, how crucial do you think uh, was the role of her father in her life? Uh, obviously, because he recognized that in her and mm. then cultivated it. Um, you know, I, I think he played a very crucial role. But you know, I do wonder if, I don't want to sit in judgment, but I wonder if it's fair on the child to be making the child do so many shows and she didn't attend school. Even I was thinking about the same. Yeah. When I was so I think she, she also has, I've seen interviews of hers where she didn't enjoy the fact that she didn't have a childhood. Mm. You know, and uh, you see, um, today I think about the fact that there are so many children on these reality TV shows. How many of them really want to be there? Or how many of them are fulfilling their parents' desires? You know, living their parents' dreams. I think these, th that I wonder. So I think it's, in a way, it's great because he recognized Shakuntala Devi's rare gift and cultivated it. But uh, I'm conflicted. <laughs> yeah, same here. In fact, even I was thinking because uh, six, I think she was when, when she was in Mesur and yeah. she created that record of sorts. Then from six to 16, she was traveling. Oh, absolutely. And Not six, uh, six to sixty. London after that, and uh, uh, you know she died at the age of eighty-three, eighty-four, and pretty much up to the end, eighty-four. Pretty much up to the end, she was still much fewer shows, of course, because she was traveling less. But she was still doing shows. Yeah. And she was doing her astrological. So she's worked through her life. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I was uh, watching one of your interviews, and you've said that. Um, uh, you find you found the innate restlessness of Shakuntala Devi identical to yours. Um, what what is the importance of nervous energy uh, for any artist? I don't know. <laughs> that restlessness. If it's a good thing, I know I have it. Yeah. You know, I'm constantly. I'm much calmer now, but how do I say this? You know, I I want to do like. My, all my energies are invested in being an actor, in playing a role. But she didn't limit herself. So all my restlessness finds expression there. But with her, she was, of course, the human computer, traveling the world, doing shows. She was, um, she wrote books. She wrote 20 books in two years. Including cookery books. Including cookery books, including you know, how to make maths fun yeah. and astrology. all those. Astrology. Yeah, astrology. Then she did her, you know, she started doing astrology professionally. And um, her, she came from a family of <coughs> astrologers, as a matter of fact. Right. And then uh, she also uh, tried to enter politics. Yes, she did. Stood for elections against Indira Gandhi. Right. So, you know, she was constantly wanting to do something different and new. I I uh, identify with that restlessness when it comes to me as an actor. I want to do different things. I want to play different characters, tell different kinds of stories. And I'm fully invested in that. But with her, she was doing different things. You know, and imagine she would have busy days and at the end she would sit and write books. 
20 books in two years? That's insane. Absolutely. Uh, why do you think she entered politics at, at a point of time when she was doing maybe the best? It was a time when she um, entered the Guinness Book of World Records as well. Uh, why would you think that she just thought of getting into politics? At that point I, I've, I've also wondered. But yeah. you know, I think there was nothing that she didn't want to try. Yeah. And she thought that, oh, she's so popular that uh, she should use her popularity to do something for society if she gets elected as a politician or something like that. Maybe, um, yeah, I think it was, maybe it was even a power trip. Maybe. Yeah, maybe it was a power trip because she had uh, seen a great deal of power. Right. She was literally um, the king and the queen and all of that in, in her world. Right. So I think she thought that this will be good. But I think that's what it is. Never say die spirit. There was nothing she didn't try. She played the flute. She played the sitar. You know, it's. She also wrote a crime thriller. <laughs> crime thriller? Okay, that's impressive. <laughs> so there's. You think of something and oh, Shakuntala Devi's done it already. <laughs> so I was watching one of her interviews and she has said that. Um, Nobody challenges me. I challenge myself. Yeah. So while I was watching that, um, I immediately thought that uh, this is exactly how Vidya Balan functions as well. We've seen her over the period of time. Uh, because you challenge yourself. You, you've always set new parameters for yourself. Uh, what is it that you've personally learned from Shakutna Devi and her life? What have I learned from Shakuntala Devi is that uh, honestly um, th there are some realizations that I can't share now because I'll be giving away things about the story but I can tell you that as a woman I admire the fact that she wanted to conquer the world and she went ahead and did it without any guilt without being apologetic and she celebrated herself you know we all thought she actually believed that she owned the world I think that is something that I keep reminding myself of because especially at a time which was, you know, I wasn't even born in 77, <laughs> you know, or the, at, the, at the time when she was at the peak of her career. I think that, that zest for life, that never say die spirit, that, you know, like you said, no one challenges me, I challenge myself, I'm the best in my world. Yeah. To believe that and not slip up once because when you go through her life, I've also spoken to her daughter and her son-in-law and everyone and everyone says the same thing, that she never doubted herself. I think that when you don't doubt yourself at all, I think it's unbelievable, especially as a woman. Absolutely. Um, so the film is directed by Anu Menon. It is written by Anu Menon and Nayanika Maithani with the dialogues by Ishita Moitra. Yeah. So so many you, women. So many women. And Keiko, who's the cinematographer. Great. And uh, our co-producer on the film is also a woman, Shikha. Uh, yeah. There's also Redita here. So it's too many women on right. us. Right. You know, the editors, Antara, who's a woman. The production designer was a woman. So we were surrounded by women. And I've never been surrounded by so many women. I like that little male energy. <laughs> But I enjoy, it was truly collaborative. And yeah. without taking away from any of the men I've worked with, I must say, this was one set where there were no egos. There were no games being played. Right. You know, there was no one-upmanship. Everyone was working towards the film. Right. And you have Amit Saad, I believe, and uh, Sanya Malhotra there as well. Yeah, and Jishu Sengupta. Jishu Sengupta is playing your father from what I understand. Uh, no, uh, Shakuntala's husband. Uh... Shakuntala's husband. Okay. Jishu Zain Gupta is playing Shakuntala's husband. Shakuntala's husband. Oh, okay. That's interesting. All right. And uh, so um, I was watching one of her interviews, another interviews of Shakuntala Devi. And uh, she said that uh, I've traveled all across the world. I've not been to China and Russia. And the reason that she gave for that was that uh, they don't believe, they're, they're a communist country and they don't believe in God. <laughs> and I'm someone who has a deep faith. <laughs> In God. So I was immediately reminded of your character from Mission Mangal. 
is a scientist but believes in the supreme power and that impossible can happen because of that. Um, she did end up going to Russia. She did? Yeah, okay. she did end up going to Russia. So I think she was also, you know, so quick-witted. If you don't have to She was one of those people. Yeah. I, I, I'm a person of uh, great faith. My relationship with God, my understanding of God has changed and evolved, I'd like to believe, over the years. Yeah. So, uh, but to each his own. If you're an atheist or a non-believer, which my husband is, I have absolutely no problem. So I would not go to China or Russia because <laughs> they are communist. <laughs> All right, so uh, finally, uh, what do you think was the most challenging part of playing Shakuntala Devi, the human computer? To uh, make maths enjoyable. Oh, that's interesting. You know, because you have a certain perception of maths. You know, ev every second person you meet will say, you like maths or what? Oh, I find maths so boring. And I actually enjoyed maths as a student. Right. But how do you make maths interesting for another one? So both for the director and for me. I think that was a real challenge. How to do the performances in a way that I enjoy it. So that if I enjoy it, then, you know, audiences enjoy it. I think that was the most challenging part for me. Right. Uh, so um, with that, we've had a fabulous conversation with you, all of the people who are present thank over you. here. They've, I think, really enjoyed listening to you. And uh, thank you very much for your time. And uh, congratulations once again for doing what you are doing because it's inspiring for a lot of people who are present over here and millions of your fans all across the world. Thank, thank you very you. much. Happy New Year once again. Happy New Year. Thank you and thank you all. Thank you. IIT Pavai Tech Fest for inviting me. I think she deserves me. a standing ovation. She deserves a standing ovation. <laughs> I think she does that, right? Thank, Thank you very you. much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.